All right, joining me now, Florida Congressman Matt Gates, who has voted 11 times for candidates other than McCarthy. Congressman, great to see you tonight. Um, I love seeing you, by the way, with Congresswoman Jayapal. What were you talking about there? I love seeing that video. Any, any scoop you can give us? That was funny. Well, my, I'm like, what, the, what are they talking about? Uh, my conversations with Democrats have largely been about making sure that they don't leave the floor for dinner or fundraisers or whatnot. We need them to stay there so that the denominator in the equation on the election of a speaker allows us to have leverage to push for many of the things we've been discussing on the budget, on term limits, uh, on the really the order of the House of Representatives. So committee assignments and chairmanships aren't bought and sold based on who's able to redistribute the most lobbyist money, while the American people are often left behind in a corrupt, broken system in Congress. Yeah, I think that your point about, um, you know, ru rushing off to events with consultants or fundraisers is important. Um, I saw there was a fundraising email sent out by Andy Biggs, who's one of the other individuals, of course, opposing McCarthy. And he sent a fundraiser out as the action was happening on the floor, saying, we block Kevin McCarthy from becoming Speaker of the House, but now we conservatives must lead the fight to get the leadership we deserve. Congressman Gates, is that the right, you know, we love Congressman Biggs, but is that the right approach, uh, given your message about don't run out to the fundraisers? Well, I didn't want to make sure people stayed on the floor. I've sent out similar emails, and the reason is because pro-McCarthy groups have actually been running robocalls in our districts trying to pressure us and leverage us. So, yes, when you have Kevin McCarthy utilizing his extensive political resources to battle against House conservatives, we want the great patriots all throughout this land to go to MattGates.com, chip in, so that I can fight back and get a message out about the great things that we are working to achieve. And it is not the end of the world that we take a few extra days or maybe even a couple weeks to sort this out. I mean, Laura, you know this. There are some days in Congress where the only thing we vote on is the changing of the name of one post office. Now we're deciding who's second in line to the presidency. And the construct of these rules concessions functionally turn the speakership into a ceremonial position. Matter of fact, if my colleagues get what they want from McCarthy, the chairman of the Freedom Caucus will actually be more important than the Speaker of the House in determining the legislation that reaches the floor, how amendments are processed, and how spending when, so, occurs going yeah, forward. I, I get what you're, you know, you know, you know on, on the establishment issues, I'm, t I'm totally with you, okay? But I'm always also about the art of the possible, what's po possible here. So. You did get a number of concessions that I'm not sure if I were on the other side I would have given you, but a number of concessions from McCarthy, an attempt to get you know to 218. So he lowered the threshold of the votes required to begin uh, the process of removing himself as Speaker. Just one person, one member of the conference, can do it now. And to keep, uh, he also agreed to keep uh, his own pack out of GOP primaries and also to add more Freedom Caucus members. To the House Rules Committee, and I understand he also signed on to a separate approval process for earmarks and allowed floor votes on term limits for members and specific border policy legislation. What else do you require that he do or agree to before Matt Gates will say, okay, I'm on board? I wouldn't be betting on uh, my vote for Kevin McCarthy under almost any circumstance. But it's important to note that all of those so it's points personal, you just then. presented. Wait, Wait, hold, on, hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, Ed, that's personal then. You, no, you no, just no. made this very principled point. No, no. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, I am, I'm a man of principle and I believe in X, Y, and Z. But if he gives me X, Y, and Z, I'm not going to vote for him. What? Well, here's the, How does no, that no, no. make Here, sense? Here's how it makes sense, Laura. Kevin McCarthy is the masthead of the lobby corps. And I resent the extent to which Kevin McCarthy utilizes the lobbyists and the special interests to be able to dictate how political decisions are made, how policy decisions are made, and how leadership decisions are made. Kevin McCarthy has been in the leadership for 14 years, and he has sold shares of himself to special interests, to political action committees, and so that's why I don't think he is an appropriate choice. He also so has no Trump ideology. What's that? Why is Trump? Why? I mean, you you are very close. Well, I mean, to look, President I Trump. love President. I yes. I, so why I take is a, why is Trump for him? I mean, how many I, how many posts on Truth Social can we see from President Trump telling y'all, okay, this is this has been fun, but let's let's wrap it up here. Well, I love President wrong? Trump. I I he I love President Trump. I defended him a great deal in Congress, but 
uh, HR wasn't always his strong suit. You know, President Trump got us folks like Jeff Sessions and Bill Barr and Jim Mattis and Mark Esper, people who didn't always advance America First policy. So I, while I think so Trump has the vision, on this. I do. I think President Trump is wrong to the extent that he supports Kevin McCarthy. I'm going to support President Trump if he or when he runs uh, for re-election in 2024, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to back him on this play. So look, if we are able to get are these you, rules are you going to be okay, Congressman? Will, be will you be okay then if there's ultimately a deal struck with moderate Democrats that give Democrats kind of co-control of the committees? You're fine with that? No, absolutely not. That that will not happen. There are two well, potential that scenarios happen. here. No, that, listen, I'm on the floor, Laura. These 212 Democrats are going to vote for Hakeem Jeffries every single time. He is a historic candidate for them. They are not going to cleave off under any circumstance. I assure you that if Democrats join up to elect a moderate Republican, I will resign from the House of Representatives. That is how certain I am. I can okay. assure your viewers that won't happen. Are you, so, are there you are for two Scalise? Possibilities. Is hold Steve on, hold, Scalise hold. okay for you or there, no? Steve Scalise, there are two, no? Well, that depends on if he if he would accept these rules that we've spent a lot of time on. So we'd have to have that discussion with Steve Scalise. So far, Steve Scalise hasn't indicated that he would run. I would far prefer Jim right. Jordan. And if Kevin well, McCarthy but, pulls out of the race, I do, expect, yeah. I do expect Jim Jordan to mount a campaign. Oh, well, he isn't running yet. If, Jim, if Look, if Kevin McCarthy got out of this race, and Jim Jordan would get yeah. into it. That's my belief. And I believe Jim Jordan would win. I think he would invigorate our movement. I think he's broadly trusted in every corner of the Republican Party and with a lot of our donors and supporters and activists. Uh, that's the type of option if Kevin McCarthy bows out. If Kevin McCarthy doesn't bow out, then he will have to live the entirety of his speakership in a straitjacket constructed by these rules that we're working on now. So and, you're, and you you prefer a speaker with a straight jacket than one who you believe is just a spenderama, right? Well, I prefer a straight jacket if it's sense. Kevin McCarthy. If it was a Jim Jordan, we certainly wouldn't need that because we trust Jim Jordan. We have zero trust in Kevin McCarthy. And there's just a large body of work to evaluate his continuous voting for big spending bills, his support of amnesty in the past, his refusal to join us in trying to break up big tech. Well, that's most this Republicans. Is, this is someone yeah. who's whose yeah. like, compass is like a wet finger in the wind. All right, Congressman Gates, we're going to be watching this very closely tomorrow. We can't, can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.